everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Cinematically Late. This is episode number four or five. I don't even know anymore because I've already lost track. It's going to be on the description or on the title of this video. Regardless, today we are talking about a movie that was in theaters and then briefly had a stint before going to DVD, before it got quickly on put onto Disney+, Plus, and that is, of course, Disney and Pixar's Onward. Now, this one had a bit of an interesting... Um, going about as it was put pretty quickly onto video on demand. One of the very first, especially on Disney Plus, the actual very first um, to hit that platform with this COVID-19 situation happening, um, getting people to stay at home. I think it was a great strategy by Disney to be able to do that. They're going to be doing a lot other movies um, with that strategy. I know Artemis Fowl, they completely pulled and are going to be putting straight on Disney Plus. Uh, I'm sure that's going to happen with several other properties, probably not the big ones like Mulan, things like that. Um, but uh, bold strategy, and it worked out for them, at least in my opinion. But that's not why you're here. You're here because you want to talk about Onward. That's why I'm here. So let's talk about some Onward. Now, of course, Disney and Pixar have killed the animation game for quite some time. They've had some misses here and there. Um, but this one, I feel like, is a solid one. Probably not their best, though, and that's going to be my point number one here, is that it's great, it's a cute adventure, but it's not their best movie. There are plenty of other good ones, Toy Story franchise, except for four, um, what have you, Monsters, Inc., Incredibles, um, you name it, there's a lot of great ones out there. But this one I probably wouldn't say is my favorite, but it was cute. It was a fun adventure. Um, I actually watched this movie twice just to make sure. Uh, I watched it the first time. Didn't really leave a great taste in my mouth, but I went back and watched it a second time just to make sure I knew what I was talking about for this video. And it turns out I actually kind of liked it a lot better on the second viewing, which I thought was interesting. Not that I noticed more stuff, but it just felt like a better adventure overall than it was the first time. Now, the first time I watched it by myself, second time I watched it with someone, so maybe that's what it was. I could sort of bounce more the emotion. Uh, it was more of a shared experience versus the solo watch. Maybe that's what it could have been, but I definitely enjoyed it. Got a lot more out of it on the second viewing than the first, uh, but hopefully the first viewing for yourself was a lot more positive than was for mine. Um, now, as I mentioned before, Disney and Pixar are crushing a lot of the animation game. And this one was no exception. The visuals are absolutely spectacular in terms of the textures of the world. Um, it just felt like it was real. Like the fact that they can make these things in the computer and make them look real are completely astounding. Like it's beautiful. The only thing though is that you get so thrown off with the style of the characters where things look so photorealistic and then these cartoony characters are there. It just sort of takes you out of it a little bit, even though you know you're watching a kid's animated movie. Um, I think they've gotten so good that something else is going to have to give if we want to continue to push the animation genre. That's not necessarily a, a negative against the movie, just in general that it looks a little cartoony in terms of characters, but still overall visually stunning. Um, let's see what else. Point number three is that this movie, I think, in a negative aspect, to its credit, felt very Shrek-y, uh, if you know what I mean. Like, it's got a lot of good stuff, but it felt like it's been done before. A lot of, like, that medieval stuff, themed things, or, like, fairy tale type of things, dragons, uh, elves, you name it, uh, centaurs. Putting them in a modern setting felt kind of Shrek-ish. Um, especially in comparison to like a Shrek 2, like when they go to like the Hollywood area, um, I don't even, uh, Far Far Away um, was the name of it in Shrek, where like they show modern versions of like say Starbucks or I don't know, I don't even remember what's there, like Versace or Burger King, whatever, you name it. That kind of translated here as well with like maybe like the name brand of like a soap or um, things in the background, like maybe their phones or uh, just little pieces of technology or things like that that may have translated from like the olden days to modern times um, that just felt like it was kind of ripping off or plagiarizing a little bit of previous properties. Um, but it's kind of hard not to do that, especially comparing the one and two um, in the long run. But it was, I was just hoping for more out of it uh, overall in terms of the story. Uh, this is point number four, I think. I don't even know anymore. Um, 
it'll be on the card thing in the bottom. Uh, I was just hoping for more out of this movie. I felt like it was a good adventure, but they just hindered on so many things that are so tropey, especially in the Disney genre, especially uh, with like the parent being dead um, or you know having to go on a certain quest or obtain a certain thing or these even the moral or the lesson uh, of being like it's not what you expect or you know maybe have different expectations. I'm not sure what the lesson may be, but it always feels like it's repetitive. There's always a dead parent or somebody who's about to die or is dead. Um, you name it, there's a lot of that stuff happening in Disney. And they just continued to beat that horse, and it's been long dead. And I just wish they would have gone a different direction with it. Because I think they did have a really good idea with the dad um, and bringing him back for a day. I didn't like the fact that it was his legs. Um, maybe if it was like he had been his spirit or his, um, I don't even know, his consciousness could have been put into something ridiculous. I feel like that would have been a better movie than watching a pair of legs with a glowy top midsection waist. I just bit my tongue. Oh, sorry about that. So uh, with instead of that glowy midsection waist, um, maybe could have been literally anything that would have been a lot more of an adventure in terms of like getting his body back or whatever. I feel like that would have been more fun than just like this weird half leg thing that couldn't talk. And then um, the moral being at the end, you know, him not getting to, spoiler alert, by the way, talk to his dad and said it's his brother um, who had a uh, more of an emotional moment that we never got to see. Um, just part of things like that that are just little subtle things that I feel like there are tropes constantly happening with Disney. And I wish that they would change it. But I know it's their formula and it works for them. It gets makes the millions of dollars and um, maybe that's the best thing for them. But I feel like they should go in a different direction at some point. Um, I don't know what the case may be down the road for them, but oh man, I would really hope to see a different formula for at least a little while, especially with something as cool and with a great idea and a concept like Onward, where there were like these medieval things um, in modern times. I thought that was phenomenal. Um, and I even talked about it in my trailer review or reaction, whatever you want to call it, um, that these legs were going to make us cry. And I feel like that didn't happen, but the connection between the brothers is what really hit home uh, more than anything else. And I feel like the mom just kind of got the raw end of the deal for the most part because she was basically a single mom and like crushing it. Um, and I feel like she got the raw end of the deal part of the way. Um, just different things like that. I felt like they could have really improved and tightened things up and made it a lot better movie and probably had a lot better reception. I don't know what the reception on this was, but I'm pretty sure that it wasn't the, not been pandered as the greatest Pixar movie of all time. I haven't certainly heard that and I'm sure that's not the case because as of watching it, that was the case. But do I recommend watching it? Absolutely. It's a great movie. A lot of great fun visuals. A great start, uh, great adventure. Um, a lot of it was fun. I liked the dynamic between Chris Pratt and Tom Holland's characters. I did feel like, however, the Chris Pat Pratt character could have easily been replaced by a Jack Black. And it would have been the same exact movie. So if they couldn't have gotten Chris Pratt and they could have gotten Jack Black, it probably would have been the same movie for the most part. Um, I just feel like they were very interchangeable in terms of their personality for this. And I feel like that probably would have been the better fit. But Chris Pratt still did a good job. Tom Holland did a great job. Um, I, th I just It has its problems, but it's still worth a watch. If you do have Disney+, Plus, I recommend watching it. Uh, if you bought it beforehand, I mean, you probably have watched it. Um, either way, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section down below. I would love to hear where this sort of ranks in your Pixar ranking, or um, did you even like it? Do you feel like it could have been better? Um, what's the deal with the dad? Do you think that would have been a better story? Like I said, put him, his soul in a different thing. But I know Disney and Pixar have another movie coming out later called Soul. It's a big mess. Um, but let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. I would greatly appreciate it. While you're down there, make sure you um, click the like button, as well as subscribe if you're not already. I would greatly appreciate it. Trying to get to 300 subs by the end of the year. Uh, my buddy Archer's almost at 150. He's only got like 10 to go. Just share a little love. I would appreciate it. 
uh, spread a little bit of the love. Um, really, those are my thoughts on Onward. Onward? On Onward? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.